Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there's a little story that I heard a long, long time ago. I don't know where it came from, I don't know who said it, but I just know when I was young, it was more youthful days, I heard this story and it was really hit me. And it hit me really hard, and I always thought about it for the rest of my life. Every time I went to make the wrong decision, I thought, what's going to happen? What are the repercussions going to be in the long run? And this is how it goes. Uh, it's been said that up in the Arctic Circle, there was a group of Eskimos. And if they wanted to catch a wolf, they knew that wolves were very uh, difficult to catch and very dangerous. But it was very easy to access seal's blood. So what they would do was, they would catch a seal, they drain some of its blood, and they would get a two-edged sword, a long two-edged sword, with, that means it would be like a knife or a blade, and on both ends of the blade, both sides of the blade, it would be very sharp. It would have a very, very long, long handle. You'll understand why the handle is long in one minute. I'll get to that, okay? So a very long blade, two-edged, and then a very long handle. That can go, and you'll understand why. They would take this blade, they dip it in the seal's blood, they take it out of the blood, and they would do this over and over again, okay? They dip it in the seal's blood, they take it out, and then the, the blood would freeze layer upon layer. And when they were done, they'd have this big, long, what they call a bloodsicle, like a popsicle, but made out of seal's blood. They dip it, take it out, freeze, dip it, take it out, freeze. Eventually, they'd have this big, long blade with a bloodsicle on there. Then they would go to an area where they knew that wolves gathered, wolves might go, and the wolves may be gathered there quite often. They would take the handle and they would bury it into the ground to stabilize that knife. So not even why it was important that they had the handle. They would bury it into the ground so that, that knife could not move, okay? Then they'd go home. Meanwhile, wolves would come around, or a wolf would come around, and he would smell, because he has that sense of smell. He would smell that blood, and he would come around and smell, mm, I can smell fresh blood. He'd come along and sniff it, and then he'd come to the pub. But he would lick, lick, lick it a little bit. This is good, fresh blood. And he would lick at it, he'd lick at it, he'd lick at it, keep licking at this blood sickle. And eventually, as he lick up lick this blood sickle, his tongue would become exposed. His, his tongue would become exposed to that blade, a little at a time, just little enough to slice his tongue and him not to realize it. But as he licked it, he would get colder and colder and colder. Eventually, his tongue would get very numb, so he couldn't really feel the little slithers. All he knew was that the more he licked his blood sickle, the more he enjoyed it. So he'd keep licking it. Eventually, he'd keep slicing his tongue, keep slicing his tongue, right? And then the blood would start to flow, and he'd say, oh, this is so fresh, warm blood. And he'd lick it and lick it and lick it, and his body would become weaker and weaker because he was actually bleeding himself to death. But he didn't realize it. He thought he was being fed. And eventually, that blade would be more and more and more and more exposed, and he'd slice his tongue. Now his tongue would just gush with warm blood. And as he got weaker, his body would want more food, and he'd keep licking that warm blood, and he'd feel stronger, and he'd feel stronger and stronger. And eventually, he just lick himself to death. He would get so weak, he would fall right over to the ground and just die. And that's all that would be left it was a blade, an exposed blade sticking up from the ground. Meanwhile, the Eskimo would come back a day or so later. The Eskimo would come back. He would drag, grab that wolf by the legs, just drag it across the snow and drag it back home. And this is a story I heard years ago. It's always stuck with me every time I went to make a decision. What are the repercussions of the decision I'm making? Why am I making the decision today? Could it actually hurt me in the long run? I think it's good for me. It hurt me. And I don't know what it was about, but that's all I know is I tell the story to everybody, and everybody basically comes back with the same conclusion. The story is the wolf pretty much thought he was being fed. And in fact, he was really taking his own life.